Hi, my name is Ryan Langwish, and welcome back to Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth for game designers. If this is your first time here, welcome. If growing as a game designer is something that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel, and maybe also check out some of the other Tabletop Simulator um, videos that I've recorded, as this is a installment in a continuing series um, exploring prototyping in Tabletop Simulator, and specifically now getting into scripting in Tabletop Simulator. Um, without further ado, let's jump into today's topic, which is how to do a sort of auto-refill of cards using scripting and tabletop simulator. So what this might look like in a game is having a, a scripting button, a button that's available to the players, that when they click it, it's going to automatically fill certain spaces on the board um, with cards, but it's going to do it somewhat intelligently, meaning it's only going to put cards where there's currently cards missing, so only to the empty spaces, where if a card is already there, it's not going to refill it. There's a lot of games that do something kind of like this, where cards only refill um, to open spots. A lot of times this might be done in like a card row, something like Ticket to Ride or similar games where cards are constantly refilling to a row. Um, I used a row as my example in my last video, um, which was on just simply scripting the setup of cards. So here I, I wanted to kind of give a little bit different example, so I'm just kind of covering um, some, di some different things that can maybe be more helpful. Um, so in this case, I'm going to have a, a nice simulated board here that has three spaces. Oh, my arrow's not going where I want to. Um, three spaces here that just represent arbitrary positions on the board, right? And there could be more of these positions. Um, but the point being, the spaces aren't in just some organized line. They're, they're kind of in arbitrary positions. Um, so what's our goal here? Our goal is that we're going to have a button that when we click it, it's going to deal cards to these three spaces, but only if cards aren't currently there. Um, and that's kind of the main functionality. And then we're going to kind of add something at the end for fun where not only will it fill in the empty spaces, but if the card is still there, if it, if it isn't an empty space, it's going to actually add like a poker chip so that like money accumulates on that option, which is another thing that a lot of games do if, if certain cards or options aren't being taken. Um, sometimes they'll, they'll get incentivized over time to be taken by getting coins added or something like that. Um, so we'll add that in, um, and as it's actually a fairly s simple addition to make. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to want is a button, and this is going to be a true of a lot of these scripting tutorials. I kind of have things set up um, already here, and I have this checker here that's already locked in place, um, which is what I'm going to use to anchor my button to. So if we right-click that checker, and we go to scripting, and open up the scripting editor, um, we are basically going to use this UI tab for the checker to add our UI button um, to be shown there. And so to do that, I'm going to be using the XML tags for um, button. So it's going to have the opening tag and the closing tag. Um, in between those tags is going to be the text that we want on our button. In this case, I'm just going to say refill cards. And then we're going to have um, various options that we put in this opening tag um, that define the characteristics of this button. So the first one, and one of the most important ones, um, is going to be the onClick property. And this is telling um, Tabletop Simulator, when this button is clicked, what code do we want run? What do we want it to do? Um, so this is ultimately going to be the name of a function that we put in our Lua file. Um, so let's just name this um, refill cards. So we don't have that yet, but we'll add that later. Um, then we're going to add a position. So this is going to be relative to our checker. And so I'm just going to do 0, 0, negative 30, which should just put it kind of on top of the checker so that we don't see it. Um, we're going to want a width and a height. So we'll say 600 by 200. Um, obviously, this is all stuff you could modify um, to make it look how you want it to look. Um, I'm going to use a font size of 72. And that is it. Um, so let's go ahead and save and add these changes in and see if it's what we want. Reminder that if you had made any changes to the game itself, um, you would want to save those first before clicking this. But because I already had everything set up and saved, I can go ahead and just do this right now. 
So if we look here, we now have this nice refill cards button, which if you secretly, you know, peek down here, there's actually a checker under there. Um, some mods, I mean, you can do some things like have the checker actually positioned below the table and like lock it in place. Um, if you really aren't wanting it to be uh, in <laughs> seen in any way, we're not worried about that here for now. So we have our button and we can click it and it does nothing as expected at this point. So the reason it does nothing is because if we go back into our scripting window, uh, we defined that it should call the refill cards function, but we have not defined that function. So we know for sure that in here, we're gonna want that function, um, <laughs> mixing up my programming languages here, which is gonna be function refill cards. Um, so this is, you know, something's going to happen in here um, when we click it. So let's quick talk through what is it we're trying to accomplish. Just kind of, and th this is common when you're, whenever you're trying to program something, is kind of just break it down into to in, saying it in English, what are the steps that we want um, to have happen. So when we click this, we want to first check each of these three spots and see, is there a card there? Right, because if there's cards in all these places, we don't even want to do anything, at least not yet. I talked about the, the kind of coin thing later. But for now, we don't want to do anything. However, if it's empty, we want to take a card from the deck, we want it to flip, and then go to that spot. That's kind of the functionality we're looking for. So one of the first things that we're going to have to add to our scripts is the ability for it to locate certain objects that we want to interact with um, in the game. Um, one of those for sure is going to be the deck because we're going to have to deal from the deck. So what we can do is we can right click um, here and actually my context menu is getting cut off by the bottom of the screen. Uh, if we click here, go to scripting. There's the option to copy the GUID to the clipboard. Then we're going to go back into our scripting window and I like to put these in the global um, section. So I kind of let this be the single source of truth for my GUIDs. And so I'm just gonna say deck GUID equal to um, that ID there. Now we ultimately are gonna need to reference that ID in our checker object. And so the way we can grab that from the global script um, is we're gonna save it into a similar variable. Um, I can do global, meaning this global script, dot get var and then the name of the variable, so deck GUID. Um, and I talked about this a little in my last video, but the, the reason I do this is so that even if I reference that ID in many different places in my program, only here is it actually defined. Everywhere else points to that value. So if I ever need to change it, there's just one place to change it. It's kind of just good programming practice. Um, so we know we're gonna need that eventually, but how are we gonna do this piece of checking if cards are currently at these positions. This is where um, Tabletop Simulator's functionality with scripting zones is gonna come in handy. And this is actually a very powerful tool at your disposal when it comes to scripting things in your game. So if we click this scripting zone option here, this allows us to draw in a zone just like you would with you know a normal hidden zone or something like that. Um, the difference being these zones don't do anything. And I'm gonna put one at each of these spots. Currently, the, these zones have no functionality, but what they're doing is they're giving us something that we can reference in our scripts. Um, and specifically, we can reference things like what objects are currently in the zone. Um, we, we can pull an event when an object goes into a zone or leaves a zone. We could have that trigger certain behavior. Um, so it kind of gives us the ability to, to link our code to things that are happening in the environment. Um, now these are kind of ridiculously tall right now. Um, if you wanted to kind of make them uh, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, look nicer, uh, you could come in here with the gizmo tool and edit it a little bit. So like, I'm going to set this to a Y scale of 1 and lower it to the table here. Um, so that just put it down there. And I'll do that for each of these. Um, what I'm using these scripting zones for is I want them to answer that question essentially of are there currently objects at that position? I could get more fancy and say is there specifically cards from that deck? 
I'm not going to worry too much about that. We're just going to say if, if it finds anything here, it's going to assume that it's because there's a card there. Now, very similar to our deck, how we needed the deck GUID, we're going to need the GUIDs of each of those scripted zones, which you notice when you uh, go out of the scripted zone tool, they're not visible. So these aren't going to be visible during the game. They're kind of just a behind the scenes um, thing. But what we can do is we can come in here, and if we look at them again, we can right click them, and that actually just copies them straight to the clipboard. Um, they just know that that's likely <laughs> what you're wanting to do with a scripting zone is get the GUID. And if we come in back where we put in our dex GUID, we're going to do a similar thing, um, but we're going to actually put um, all three of these into kind of a list, which in Lua um, is basically a table. And so I'm going to put the first one in here, a comma, if I pull this window out of the way, and I'm going to right click our second one, and we're going to put that second in this comma separated list, and right click our last one and put that here. So I now have a table that has the three GUIDs corresponding to my three scripting zones. These are going to allow me to now get those scripting zones, finding them by their GUID, and then use those in my code. So let's go back into our checker. And we have all these GUIDs of the deck and of the zones, but we actually want to get the objects for those things. We want to actually get the deck and get the scripting zones themselves. And the way you do that in Tabletop Simulator is by using the get object by GUID function. Um, and so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to onload in the checker. So every um, object has access to this onload function, which is just anything you want to happen when this component is first loaded. I'm basically going to find the actual objects for these GUIDs and, and store them in variables so that I have them to access and that, so that I only do that once um, is kind of the idea. Um, so we know we're going to want to get our deck. So if we do deck equal to get object by GUID and actually I always do this. It's get object from GUID. If I did by GUID it wouldn't recognize that and I would get errors. Um, but this should be correct. And we want to do that um, with the deck GUID, which we grabbed from our global script. So at this point now, and, and I'm not, you'll, if you've watched some of the other videos, you'll notice sometimes I put local in front of variables. That's if that variable is only going to be used within the scope of that function or whatever block it's in. Here, I'm going to use this deck down in this other function. I'm going to use it kind of across functions in this file. So I don't want it to be a local variable. So that does the deck, um, but then I also am going to want to get all of those zones, the three zones. And so I'm gonna make a variable called card zones and make that an empty table. Um, and I basically wanna loop over my um, zone GUIDs and for each one, find the object, the actual scripting zone, and put it in this card zones table. So the first piece I'm going to need for that is I need to actually grab those um, GUIDs from our global. So I'm going to do card zone GUIDs equal to global dot. And here it's actually not going to be get var. Um, and that's because this is actually a table that's storing these. Um, so we're actually going to use get table. Same concept, just a different function. Um, so we do the name of it. Um, and then we basically now want to loop over that. And for each one, we want to um, find the zone and put it in here. Um, and by looping, what it basically allows us to do is say you later wanted to add more spaces to this, more than three. You could very easily come and just add the GUIDs to this list, and this would all still work because I'm looping over the entire table. So regardless of how many there are, um, I'm going to cover all of them. So the way we're going to loop over them is we are going to do a for loop um, specifically using the I pairs function. So let me kind of write this out and then explain it. Um, we're going to do it. I pairs of card zone GUIDs, which is our table of those, 
um, do end, and the inside of this block will be our loop. Um, so what this is saying, basically I pairs is taking a list or a table of these things and it's returning them in pairs where they're numbered. So the first pair is gonna be one with the first GUID. The second pair is gonna be two with the second GUID and so on and so forth. It's gonna, each time through the loop, I is going to be storing that index, the number, and then GUID is gonna be storing whatever the value was, which in this case are GUIDs. These names could be anything. I'm just naming variable names here. I, as a, you know, just a reminder, I could name this banana and it would work. Banana would just be holding whatever the data is. But in this case, it's GUIDs. Now in this loop, I'm only really gonna care about the GUID because I'm gonna use it to find the object. So since I don't need this I variable, I'm not gonna reference the index, it's actually good practice to just eliminate it and put an underscore, which is basically telling Lua, I don't need you to track this variable and pass it in because I'm not gonna be using it. So what do we wanna do in here? Well, the first thing we wanna do is we want to locate the actual object of the zone based on the GUID, which is gonna be very similar to how we found our deck. Um, we're gonna get object from GUID. What GUID do we wanna use? Well, it's gonna be the one that we're getting each time through the loop. So this loop is gonna go three times, and each time we wanna get the next GUID from that table. Um, so I'm gonna use that GUID variable there, and that's gonna store it in this local variable zone. And then I wanna take that and I wanna put it into our card zones table, which ultimately is gonna be my list of these objects. So I'm gonna say, and actually, to insert into a table in Lua, you use table.insert, the name of the table, which is in this case card zones, and the name of the thing you wanna insert, which is zone. So this will loop three times, each time it'll grab um, the zone that we want based on its GUID, and it's gonna put it in this card zones table. Whew, now that was a lot of setup. <laughs> that was essentially just getting us to the point where now we have a variable deck and a variable card zones that have the objects that we want to use in our refill cards um, function here. So now that we have that, how are we going to do this? We are going to very similarly how we were looping up here, we're going to want to loop over those card zones that we found, those three, that are representing those three locations on the board. And we're going to want to ask the question, are there currently any objects at this position? Because if there aren't, then we wanna deal a card there. So we know we're gonna have a for loop, and similarly, we're not gonna care about the index, but we're gonna say for each zone in I pairs of card zones, which is represented, that's uh, calling to our variable here that has all of those zone objects, um, then we're gonna do something. And what we wanna do is we wanna check, is there an object currently there? And this is where scripting zones become very useful because scripting zones have a get objects um, function that returns you all the objects that are currently in that zone, intersecting that zone. Um, and so that function is called on zone and it's get objects. Now this would give me a list or a table of all of the objects, but I just wanna know is there at least one, right? Is it empty or are there objects currently there? Um, and so the way you can do that in Lua, anytime you have a list of something and you wanna get the number of things in that list or the length of it, you just put the little number or octothorpe or pound or hashtag symbol in front of the whatever variable is holding your list. So this is basically saying if the number of items in this zone, we wanna ask, is it equal to zero? Double equal sign is gonna be the comparison operator. Um, so if it's equal to zero, then we want to do our cards. And if it's not equal to zero, we're not gonna do anything at this point. So finally, we wanna do a card and this is gonna be from our deck. And so the way you do can deal something from a deck is using the take object function. Um, and this is basically gonna take a table of different parameter options that are kind of all option. Um, you, you don't need all of them, you just pick the ones that you want. Um, in this case, we're interested in the flip option because we want 
the card to flip face up when it goes into that spot. And then we want to set the position of that object. And specifically, we want to just put it to the same position as our zone. Wherever our zone is, we want to put the card there. And so we can actually just grab that from our zone. We can say zone.getPosition. And that's going to give us specifically the position of that zone. So just reviewing what's happening here, we're looping over our three zones. This loop is going to go three times. Each time we're going to ask, are there any objects currently in that zone? Um, if there's not, or I guess specifically we're asking, is the number of objects that in that zone equal to zero? If so, take a card from the deck, flip it, and put it at that position. And now is the moment of truth where we see if we messed anything up. So we're going to save that, and we actually did mess something up. So let's look at what this is here. Um, error in script, checker black, so that's going to be where our error is. Function on load, bad argument number one to next, table expected got nil. Intimidating, right? Let's take a look. So it looks like the problem here is simply a variable naming issue. Here I named it card zones GUIDs. Everywhere here, I did card zone GUID. So it wasn't finding that and that was messing everything up. <laughs> so if I just make sure that my variables match here, so card zones GUIDs, um, and actually maybe the easier fix is let's just come, I kind of like the name card zone anyway. Card zone GUIDs, I think that then matches here, which will pull it in um, and should fix that. So let's see if that gets rid of the error. No more error. Um, so that's an example of, you know, you're bound to, even if you know what you're doing, get errors every once in a while. Learning how to kind of read them and, okay, it's telling me where to look um, and breaking it down is just a skill you kind of develop as you do this um, more. But don't panic. Or you can panic a little bit, but it's not too bad. So let's see what happens here now. Um, we have a refill cards button, and if we click it, nothing happens. Well, let's see if we can figure out why. Let's come in here. So after some off-screen investigation, I realized I made one of the most common mistakes to make when scripting in Tabletop Simulator, and one I'll probably, right now I'm on the trend of making it in every single video <laughs> that I do here, which is that a scripting zone You'll notice when I go here, where did our scripting zones go? Well, that's because that's not a, a code change. That's a change to the environment, which means I need to save that to the actual Tabletop Simulator save file. And because I did not do that, when I click save and play, it loaded the last save file, overwrote it, my scripting zones were gone. So those GUIDs for I had for each scripting zone weren't finding anything. That's a problem. So I'm going to real quick here add these back in um, and then we'll get back to where we were. Alrighty, so I added these scripting zones back in and I went into my global script and I updated these GUIDs so that they're reflecting the new scripting zones and most importantly I saved the file first so that those don't go away. I th I'm, I'm going to leave this all in when I edit this because I think it is a good example of just one of the easiest mistakes to make and kind of a reminder and I get to remind myself as I do these live. Um, but we should be good to see how things are doing now. So if I come back here and I click our button, look at that. We have great success. So we got a card to each one of our spots here and you'll notice if I click the button more, nothing happens because it's recognizing that there is an object at that position. It's saying there's one object here and that's not equal to zero, so it's not gonna deal the card. However, if I pull one of these out of here and click it, it now deals one just to that spot because it sees that there's nothing there. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that's basically the main functionality, right? I can grab all these cards and pull them out, and if I click the refill cards, it's gonna put them all out there. So that's cool, and you can see how you could extend that to if you just added more scripting zones for more spaces on your board or whatever you wanted to do, um, it would still work and work for all of those. Now, for one last addition, suppose we wanted it that when we click this button, it added like coins to these that accumulate until somebody picks that option. Well, if we come into our, and let me actually first just gather up these cards. Um, I'm realizing now that actually wasn't that important since it'll overwrite it when it loads the file. Um, but let's come in here and look at our refill cards function. Right now, we're dealing the card if the number of objects there is not equal to zero. 
Now we basically have behavior that we want to do if it is equal to zero. So the way that you do that um, is in an if statement, we can add an else clause. And all this is saying is that if the number of objects is zero, we want to do everything in this first indented block. Otherwise, else, we want to do everything that's in the second block. Um, and this is going to be, because it's in this loop, it's evaluating that for each individual zone, which is why it can deal to some without dealing to others, depending on um, if there's objects there. So what we want to do here is we want to actually spawn an object, um, specifically a coin, if the object is there, if it found objects in that space. So Tabletop Simulator has a spawn object function, um, which similar to take object is going to take a table of options. Um, and I'm actually going to indent or space this down here. Um, and so the options we were going to pass here is the first one is type. And we want that to be um, basically what object we want to spawn, which in the case of all the built-in objects in Tabletop Simulator, they have specific names for each of them. There's also ways in the documentation that if you wanted to spawn one of your custom objects, you could do that as well. In this case, I'm going to use the chip 10 um, objects. So that's a specific name that's going to give us basically the 10 value poker chip. We also want to tell it um, where to put it, the position, which very similar to when we're dealing cards, we just want it to go to that zone, right? Whatever zone it found that had a card still there, uh, we want to use that zone's position. So we'll do that. And then lastly, we are going to, we're just going to scale it down a little bit. Um, so I'm going to give it a scale, which is just an X, Y, Z. And I'm just going to make this poker chip um, half size, um, just to make it a little bit more fit better on the cards. And so now our logic is if there, it, for each of the card zones, if there are no objects there, we want to deal a card. Otherwise, we're going to spawn a poker chip. And because of how um, tabletop simulator physics environment works, even though we're spawning all the chips at the exact same position, it kind of will automatically stack them because um, that's just what it does when stackable objects are at the same position. Um, so if we save and play here, let's see what we've got. We click refill cards and they all go out here. Um, but if we click it again, we can see that poker chip appeared at each one of these spots. Look at that. And if I continue to click it, I can just <laughs> add up all of the uh, poker chips here. Um, but if I take one, you know, ooh, finally this uh, $130 was too good to pass up. Then when I click it, it's going to refill this spot, but add poker chips to the other ones. So you see how kind of simple that was to add that functionality. And that's... Um, you know, really the power of, of a few things we introduced in this video, which um, specifically scripting zones. So scripting zones are hugely powerful, like that ability to put things at specific locations and know if there's things there um, or, or gauge whether a change has happened at that position gives you a, um, a lot of ability. But then also the spawn object um, function to be able to make objects appear um, and create them on the fly also gives you a lot of options. And so that's it for this example. Hopefully that was interesting, helpful, um, gave maybe some ideas of how this could be useful or adapted to be used in a project of your own. If you have any questions, please ask them down below. Um, I try to explain as well as I can, but I know that just like I ran across a specific error because I did something slightly wrong, you're likely to do something different wrong. Um, and I may be able to help you out um, if you post below or post co code to ask um, maybe what's wrong with it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Um, I appreciate you sticking around watching and I will see you in the next video.